Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Kovac Enterprises. Uh, we are in the process of building the B9 robot from Lost in Space, and we are at step number three in the instruction, uh, basically the torso assembly. So just to kind of uh, re-familiarize yourself uh, with where we're at and what we are doing, uh, we're at the step number 3A, which is carefully submitting the clear mouth and to the uh, back plate. Uh, those are parts number 13 and 14 for the clear parts and the back plate, which is number 34. Okay, so with that being said, let's take a look at what we're doing here. And uh, kind of put the light back in here. So what I ended up doing was uh, mixing a batch of my, uh, first off, the Craft Smart Gray with a couple of uh, drops of the uh, black Craft Smart to kind of give it a little bit darker color uh, for the, uh, basically the back plate, which you see right here. Um, and then once that was done, I actually uh, coated it with the uh, Pledge Floor Polish to kind of give it a kind of a somewhat gloss look to it. And then, of course, our two parts of the uh, number 13, 14 of the clear parts, we went ahead and uh, glued that in place. And uh, what I actually did was use this type of glue instead. Uh, it's my, uh, it's a DAP Rapid Fuse All-Purpose Adhesive bonds virtually everything. It's for interior and exterior. Sets in 30 seconds. So when I actually painted the back plate there I left it kind of blank uh, on both sides there so we had a good uh, adhesion to it. So uh, but in the meantime before I actually did the final gluing we used the uh, Tamiya Clear Orange uh, X number 26 there. Uh, I wanted to kind of give the mouthpiece uh, some color to it. So uh, this is what I kind of came up with. And again, uh, I just kind of basically brushed that on and probably went through about two or three coats on that. Just to kind of see what you see what the final project is on that. So the uh, Basically, the mouthpiece is done. Uh, you know, I'll eventually take it off the tree sprue here, but uh, it was just a lot easier to uh, work it that way. Okay. So, uh, next, what I did was since I did have the Tamiya uh, clear colors out, I went ahead and uh, let's see what we got here. We got the um, number 15 which is the uh, bottom plate as far as what the instructions uh, say and what I ended up doing is I went to the back page of the instructions where it kind of gives you the breakdown of the uh, colors and so once again uh, kind of painted them in random colors uh, again with the uh, clear orange X26 for one of them the other one is the Tamiya Clear Green, which is the X-25. And then we went with the uh, Tamiya Clear Red, which is the X-27. And then finally, we went with the uh, Clear Blue, which is the X-23. Uh, now what I'm showing you is the actual back portion of the uh, bottom plate and uh, I basically just uh, carefully hand brushed uh, each individual little part to bring it to light so to speak so we're looking at the uh, the back side of it now if I flip it around over here uh, that's kind of basically what it's going to look like from the back part there I'm still deciding whether or not to, uh, you know, transfer the paint over to the front as well. 
and uh, paint that up. Uh, so we will see uh, on that. So I'm basically just kind of let that set overnight to let it dry. So those are those, those two things right there. So the next thing I'm going to uh, end up doing at this moment is to go ahead and uh, airbrush some of my folk art silver sterling onto the actual main parts of the uh, torso itself. So uh, with that being said, stand by and we will be right back. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is the uh, After Effects uh, after uh, using the uh, Pache airbrush and using our, once again, our folk art. Uh, this is Silver Sterling number 2964. It's the multi-purpose surface type of paint. And uh, so this is our results for uh, the parts for step number three. So, and of course, when I'm using the airbrush, I'm, I'm putting the paint down in layers. So this is probably about uh, three or four uh, coats on there. You build up lightly and work your way around. So, all right, so there's the, uh, basically the top half of the uh, torso uh, for the robot. Uh, okay, so... Uh, there you go and then of course then we have the torso back as you can see here all the way around the back so lay it out pretty nice and then of course we have the uh, torso front as well I even uh, airbrush inside the insets here too as well so there you go now later on, uh, I will be painting the uh, the center part here with the lighting panel uh, goes in there, so that'll be a darker color to offset the uh, sterling silver. So uh, that's that. And then of course we have the uh, lower part of the torso here as well. So there you go. And then we have our bottom ring here. So let's take a look at that one there. So you can see on all sides, like so. And uh, I know this is probably another uh, part of the robot from another uh, step in the instructions, but uh, it asked for the same type of color, so I just went ahead and sprayed that as well. So there you go. Okay, so uh, next up, uh, like I said before, I'll paint the middle part of that uh, front torso on there, and then I'll probably put a couple more uh, coats of the Tamiya Clear uh, color combination on the uh, light panel area, and uh, glue that in place as well as the mouthpiece assembly to the uh, upper torso, and uh, we'll get it moving along. So, stand by, we'll be right back. Alrighty then, uh, we're continuing our progress on the uh, step number three of the instructions of our B9 robot from Lost in Space. And uh, let's uh, take a look and see what we got going on here, All right? So we're gonna start with the uh, upper torso. Uh, as you can see right here, let me uh, bring that in a little bit. All right. So the upper torso, we actually went ahead and glued in the uh, mouthpiece to it. Uh, again, just carefully using my uh, uh, basically uh, DAP Rapid Fuse all-purpose adhesive. It's kind of like the CA glue, uh, which bonds in about 30 seconds. So we went ahead and did that. And uh, I know further down the line that we're supposed to put in the... Um, the lifting eyes is what the instructions call for it. So you can see we actually went ahead and attached those right now. And then we just went ahead and hand painted it with the uh, silver sterling to match with the rest of the torso of the body. 
and so there is that part is done and uh, next up we went ahead and painted up the middle torso here with the silver sterling with the airbrush and uh, let me uh, Maybe so we can get the light in a little bit more here for you. But uh, as you can see here, we actually uh, installed the uh, the button plates. And uh, once again, before I actually glued it with the uh, CA glue, uh, I went ahead and decided to go ahead and brush uh, the front part of the uh, plate with all of the uh, lighting. Uh, just to kind of a, give a little bit more detail to it because even though I painted the back part of it it just wasn't uh, you know detailed above uh, detailed above for me so uh, yeah we went ahead and just uh, went with the uh, uh, the orange the green and the red and then uh, some blue actually and uh, once that was all dried and set up we went ahead and glued it into the uh, middle section there so uh, it came out real nice and now this this was all put in after I actually used the um, Craftsmart black satin for the middle section so uh, there you go and then uh, as far as the two uh, dial lights on the top there uh, I know there's been some some people use like the uh, I guess the uh, white blinking lights but I'm kind of going by the cover box that I got here uh, and to me the uh, the two colors were the green and the red so I just went ahead and and uh, painted those up as well and uh, then we got the actual switch on the left side there put in and then our, our microphone as well and uh, just the kind of the center part of the microphone I I just kind of applied some of the panel line accent color for the black so so that is done, as you can see there. Uh, one little issue I had, if you come over here to the side here, this part right here where the power pack unit is supposed to go in, uh, we had a hole right here, but there was no hole on the outside. So I basically went on the inside and uh, I just kind of drilled it from the inside out so that we have our two holes here. Now I may have to kind of uh, make this a little bit bigger to accommodate the actual uh, power pack itself so I can insert it in there correctly. So uh, that will probably be my next step right there. Um, but uh, other than that, this is kind of what it looks like all painted up and everything. I like if I, let me see if I can put the... So you see if I put a little light on the background there, see how... I don't know if that's going to show up on your camera or not, but uh, you can see, you know, tilt up, tilt down. So it kind of gives you that idea of what it might look like when it's all lit up. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not lighting this, uh, this robot out. It's just uh, going to be a stock build. But uh, there you have it. So okay, so that's that. And then up next, uh, we actually have. Uh, the lower torso with the actual torso vents on there. Now it took me a little bit to figure out how to install the, uh, the vents in. Um, I actually kind of popped the top part in first and then snapped the bottom in there. You can see there's like a little inset right here where, where each of these goes into. But uh, it took me a little while just to kind of figure out how that's going to be installed. I'm still kind of up in the arms as far as, you know, it comes with this photo etch uh, screens on there. Um, we'll see if I'm actually going to put that in or just leave it the way you see it now. Uh, I, I may use some, to me, a clear, like, smoke or something uh, to simulate the screens themselves. But uh, we'll see. And then, of course, next up is the front part here, which is the uh, where we have the programming bay. And of course, with this particular detail, the uh, there's a sliding panel or a sliding vent that's supposed to go back and forth to cover that programming bay area. 
Uh, and of course the instructions are telling you to uh, use the glue sparingly so that you don't glue the, uh, the movable vent uh, in place. So uh, after a little trial and error there, trial and error, uh, this actually kind of slides back and forth now. Yeah, as close and as kind of open so we got that working just fine so <clears throat> with that being said at this time uh, uh, try to make this uh, part of the series short in this video and uh, this is where we're at right now and I will be back later uh, and try to go ahead and you know put all this together into uh, one cohesive unit and uh, until then uh, we'll see you on the next uh, video so everybody have a good day and have a good Labor Day and we will see you on the next uh, next run so until then this is Kovac Enterprises and we are signing off Later.